So a couple of months ago, Heimbach sent me a text and it went like this. It went, hi, I'm Heimbach. Good to text you back. Now I'm joking, it didn't go like that. He texted me saying, have I heard of this piece of equipment called the Crystal Palace? It was in the Radiophonic Workshop and designed by Dave Young. It's basically a sort of sound multiplexer. What you do is you could send 16 audio signals in and it mixes them together in a sort of fady kind of way. To be honest, I'm not really sure of its function. Uh, I haven't really looked much after that. I sort of looked at the picture and made my own assumptions. And I figured the less I know, the more I could make something, you know, a little bit funky. Heimbach has since made an inspired plugin with Audio Thing of the Crystal Palace. So this is like a video at the, on the same day as that. So go and check it out. And we're going to see Heimbach in a little bit because after I've built it, I'm going to see, uh, see what he thinks. So in the past few weeks over on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel, where I am currently putting together a interactive drum machine for the wall of the museum. Well, a component in the drum machine was an inductor coil. It's one of these things and it's actually a very versatile component. If you look closely, it's basically just a bunch of copper windings around a ferrite core. And yes, you may think it looks quite a bit like a guitar pickup. That's because a guitar pickup is basically the same thing. The thing is, this is basically a microphone without the moving part. It hasn't got the part that transfers movement of air to the electromagnetic coils. And some people might be going, hey, wait a second, a microphone, if you turn it around the other way, becomes a speaker and vice versa. It can act like a speaker. This this can send out electromagnetic fields. And like the microphone, this is basically a speaker without the transferring device that transfers the electromagnetic field to movement in air. So when I was putting together this interactive drum machine for the museum, I sort of got a bit sidetracked and I put one of these onto a circuit board and saw if I could read it and use this as an electromagnetic speaker. I then used a tape head and the schematic from Music Thing Modular, the magnetophone, which is an amazing Eurorack uh, module that has a tape head in it. Well, I basically used that circuit and I've used the tape head to selectively read what was going through the inductor coil. And this right here is part of the solution that I came up with. And yes, it does look like it's been pulled straight out of CERN. <laughs> so as you can see, there are 16 ferrite cores that are placed around the center. On the back, one of the common legs of all of the coils are connected together and these is grown to ground and these other wires are going to be sending signals into the ferrite cores and these will come from input buffers and this is the input buffer circuit board I came up with it's 16 input circuits that are exactly the same each of these chips are TL074 quad operational amplifiers that means each of these have four operational amplifiers in each of them so if there's four of these there's 16 operational amplifiers Ooh! so that means the inputs go into these and then come out and go into the ferrite cores and these buffer circuits are wired up to this control panel. This is basically the jack inputs for it all. Each of them have volume controls. If you look on the back, you'll see I have actually used switched jacks. That means if just a jack is plugged in here, each of these inputs will listen to that jack unless there is a jack plugged into these. This will break the switch on the jacks and it will stop the signal cascading down. That means if you just plug a signal into here, it will sort of act like a tremolo because every single odd ferrite core will have that signal in it. But if you plug one into there and one into there, that means it will just bounce between those two because each of these signals will be spread across odd and even ferrite cores. And it just means that it's a lot more usable and it has a bit more functionality. This rather clumsy looking thing right here is the thing that will be spinning on top. You'll see there is a cassette tape read head. Here is a circuit board that is the Music Thing Modular Magnetophone and this is basically just a booster and a filter for the tape head. So it reads in here, it boosts it. If it's spinning around, how does it not get all tangled up? Well, that's where this thing comes in. This is a slip ring. There are thin copper rings. So when it's spinning around, these connections are still being made. There are a few other 3D printed parts that I've been printing on my Lowspot Mini. So without further ado, let's get this thing put together.
that's awesome. There's a few bits wrong with this still, and I'm going to do some fine tuning now, but we are actually, it's working better than I was expecting. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> That already is way better than I was expecting it to be in in all respects. It actually works and it's reading electromagnetism. There's only so much it can take before it starts saturating. So it's automatically got tape saturation built into the thing. <laughs> So Heimbach and I just had a quick chat to check out each other's projects and it turns out my video seemed to be shot on a potato. Don't know what happened there. The fun thing is we're working with something we haven't touched, we haven't played with, we've mm. only read about, seen pictures. And then, I mean, there's this Doctor Who episode and an album where you can kind of guess what it does. Both not work with it, but the idea in itself is strong and beautiful. And then he showed us what the plugin did, which is pretty damn cool. You can bounce between two audio files in a lot of different ways with different effects. <laughs> Crystal Palace machines at the Radiophonic Workshop were primarily used for sort of sequencing and soundscapes and stuff. This was a time before uh, voltage controlled oscillators were in the Radiophonic Workshop. So it just seems right to put a bunch of these uh, lovely signal generator, wobulator, whatever you want to call them, and sort of do it how it might have been done at the time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So that is my attempt at a pretty funky, weird, cross-fading, multiplexing, electromagnetic thingamajiggy. And I'm quite surprised after chatting to Heimbach how close it is to uh, the original Crystal Palace. I'm not sure on the functionings of the Crystal Palace exactly. They say something about a capacitive vein and a gold fountain pen. I haven't got a clue. Uh, so if anybody knows about the actual functionings of the inside, the actual cross-fading capacitive drum of that machine then please let me know it might be very similar to this who knows it's quite cool to be able to use this and these to make a sort of sequence sort of like it might have been done back in the day because you do see Brew and Kier sitting around in the radiophonic workshop if you're interested in the electromagnetic stuff there is actually a piece by Tom Fox in fact he's got a few things regarding electromagnetism and stuff the link is below he's got a bunch of interesting things including a wall full of uh, wires and I think he uses a guitar pickup to listen to the uh, signals going through the wires go and check out high Bags video on the audio thing plugin. It's pretty awesome and I'm quite surprised that the functionality sort of does actually cross over with this thing. I've included loads of audio from all the performing bits that I've done today on this over on my Patreon and stuff so you can download it, chop it up and whatnot and or just watch it as a whole video piece because I've just sliced it all together and that needless to say supports these sort of things. So if you want to support these sort of ventures then just for the cost of a coffee you could potentially support these sort of machines and the museum that will be opening in the next couple of months. It's crazy it's actually finally opening and this this is in some respects going to be there functioning. I'm still trying to figure out how. So if you want to support that kind of stuff and see extra content, then please go and check out over on my Patreon. Anyway, I've been Look Mum No Computer. This is a funky 3D printed machine and yeah, don't be scared to try it.